Um, she was a very outgoing person. Cash I was fabulous. Um, she had a big heart. She loved children. She liked to have fun. She was always happy. You know, and her life ended so soon. It was a seemingly typical Sunday morning in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Birds were chirping, church bells were ringing, and neighbors were going about their morning, oblivious to the unimaginable horrors waiting just around the corner. At precisely 9.49 a.m., Milwaukee Police Department received reports of a fire engulfing a residence. A trans woman is killed in Milwaukee. Firefighters found her inside her apartment Sunday night with a gunshot wound while they were responding to a fire in the unit. Trans woman. Responding rapidly, officers arrived on the scene, expecting to find nothing more than smoke and flames. Little did they know, they were about to stumble upon a grisly discovery that would grip the entire community. As the officers entered the house, no amount of training could have prepared them for what they were about to encounter. Within the charred remains lay the lifeless body of a woman, her fate sealed by a gunshot wound. 31-year-old Cass Hay Henderson loved her godson and niece as well as her extended chosen family. Cass Hay loved makeup, fashion, hip-hop, and exploring new restaurants. She attended Dunbar Vocational High School and Prologue Early College High School in Chicago, where she was born. Cass Hay would soon be faced with a life-altering accident that would change her life. A Milwaukee woman is now charged in a deadly hit and run near 6th and North from earlier this month. Cache Henderson told authorities that she saw the victim lying in the street. She tried to stop, but it was too late. According to investigators, on October 11, 2015, Henderson woke up around 2.30 a.m. to drive to her client's home. After dropping off her client, she was headed home when she saw several people running from the street to the sidewalk, she then saw a man lying in the street. She told police that she tried to stop, but it was too late and she was unable to avoid hitting. 38-year-old Timujin Genghis Khan Kibo Gyu. She indicated she left the scene because she doesn't have a license and when she got home, she realized the man she hit had died, according to the complaint. Henderson said she found someone to drive her back to the scene, and when she got there, she saw that the man's body was still there and realized he was dead. That's when Henderson says she lost it. The following year, 2016, Henderson was sentenced to serve 30 months in prison and 36 months extended supervision with credit for 157 days served. This tragedy inspired Cassie to turn her life around. For five years, she was affiliated with the Milwaukee-based group, Sisters Helping Each Other Battle Adversity. Also known as Sheba, it is a group of powerful black transgender women who provide meals for underprivileged trans women, mentorship, leadership development, HIV prevention, and so much more. Things were looking up for Cass Hay. She had a place to call her own, a vehicle, and she was really looking towards the future. Little did she know, her future would be cut short. After finding Cachet's body, police began searching through camera footage around the apartment complex while questioning people in the surrounding area. A witness told authorities that when she went to bed around 1 a.m., she did not see Cachet's car parked in the lot. A friend of the witness, who stayed the night, told authorities she woke up from a loud noise that she thought may have been a gunshot around 5.30 a.m. After falling back to sleep, she was woken up again around 7.30 a.m. by the smell of gas. Thirty minutes later, the apartment began to get smoky, and when she looked out the window, she noticed Cachet's car was suddenly parked in the parking lot. The complaint says by 9 a.m., the witness went to Cachet's apartment, but nobody answered. She called 911 when she saw smoke coming from Cachet's vent. A Milwaukee police camera near Cachet's apartment complex captured her car heading home around 3.45 a.m. The footage appears to show at least two different people in the car. That same camera captured a suspect walking south across the parking lot of Cachet's apartment building around 8.45 a.m. 
Security video appeared to also show that the suspect had been in the passenger seat of Cachet's car. After forensics were completed, a latent print was recovered from a container of Lysol wipes inside of Cachet's vehicle. That print belonged to 33-year-old Cordell M. Howe. Big story tonight at 5, a 33-year-old man is charged with the murder of a Milwaukee transgender woman. Fox 6's Angelica Sanchez shows us the new wrinkle in the next step. Angie? Yeah, guys, 33-year-old Cordell Housey has been ordered to undergo a competency exam after he refused to speak to a public defender during his initial appearance. Friends of the victim I spoke with say that they're finding themselves with more questions than answers. Like, why did he even do this? Like, why? Lottie Anana says she spoke with Cache Henderson the day she was killed. She was vibrant. She was happy. She had so many plans. She never imagined it would be their last conversation. She was definitely not in any trouble because, um, I think we would have had that conversation if something was going on. On Sunday, 33-year-old Cordell Housey was charged with Henderson's murder. Prosecutors say Housey tried to burn Henderson's home down to cover up his crime. Henderson's body was found inside. Prosecutors say he stole personal items from her before taking off. Court records show he was released from Winnebago County Jail for an unrelated crime days before Henderson's death. Let the record reflect that Mr. Housey is not communicating, nor has he looked at the court in this matter at this time. Housey was silent in court, refusing to speak to his legal counsel. The commissioner ordered he undergo a competency exam. I don't think that there's any solid evidence that would say that he's incompetent. I think it's just a, it's a ploy for anybody in a defense. If the morning after the murder, House's mother stated that House came home agitated and handed her a Gucci purse and Rolex watch. Once he was identified as a suspect, she gave the watch and purse to authorities who later confirmed the items had belonged to Cass Hay. On February 27th, a day after Cass Hay was murdered, House showed up at an unknown man's home in Nina, Milwaukee, an hour and a half outside of Wisconsin. It is unknown how House got into the man's home, but House pointed a 9mm handgun at the man's wife. The man was able to calm House down before taking the firearm and disabling it. He said House was acting strange with a blank stare on his face. He said House began showing him a video that depicted a dead African-American woman with blood on her head as well as on the floor and pillows. The description of the home in the video matched Cachet's apartment. House told the man, I caught a body of a disgusting tran. After the man gave House his gun back, House then told the man that he wanted to kill several other people and once again began pointing the gun at the man and his wife, at which the man asked House to leave, to which he obliged. The following day, February 28th, Nina and Manasha police attempted to locate House and arrest him. House led them on a chase, at which point he threw several items into the snow, including a black Sig Sauer P329 mm semi-automatic handgun with a green laser attachment, three firearm magazines, one of which contained cartridges similar to the unfired cartridge found in Cachet's home. House was eventually arrested after his car was disabled during the pursuit. House has since entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. If House is convicted, he could face up to 85 years in prison along with a $25,000 fine. Cass Hay was the third black transgender woman to have been murdered in Milwaukee in the span of nine months, which sparked fears of there being a serial killer in the area hunting down black trans women. Prior to her death, Cass Hay posted on her Facebook that she was thankful no one was writing rest in peace in front of her name. Her cousin, Veronica Beck, saw that post and felt scared. She had seen Cass Hay make posts before about transgender friends of hers that she had lost. It is still unknown how Cass Hay and Howes knew one another, but one thing is for sure, black transgender women must protect themselves. Know the signs. Any man who is uncomfortable being seen with you in public is not someone to be trusted. Take self-defense classes and purchase some form of protection. Meet in public spaces and prior to meeting, text friends and family his photo, number, and anything else that could easily identify him just in case something goes wrong. 
Let him know that you have texted his information to friends and family, and if something seems off, think of a reasonable excuse and leave immediately. I cannot express this enough, be respectful in the comments. On this channel, transphobic remarks are flagged, your comment will not be published and you will be banned from commenting on future videos. These women deserve to be protected in life and they deserve to be respected in death. Please hit the like button as this pushes the video through the algorithm. Subscribe, comment, and share across all social media platforms. She will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, Cassie Henderson. Thank you.